Friends, we invite you to study with us lesson number nine in this series, The Themes in the Gospel of John. And if you paid attention to previous lessons and even to the future ones to come, you would see that there is a lot of repetition. Yeah. We're going back over the same verses that we studied before in different contexts, but as we go over them again, we bring up new ideas, new themes that are covered. And the theme that we're going to look deeply today is this life business. In Him, there was life. Jesus is the source of life. Ellen White wrote a phrase that became pivotal in our Adventist experience when she wrote in Desire of Ages, in Him there was life, original, unborrowed, underived. Those three words, that in Christ there was underived life, meaning He's got it within Himself. Unborrowed, He didn't have to ask the Father to have life because He is God. And original, that's the life that is source of all life. That phrase became so important that some of our earlier pioneers had to travel to see her in person. Did you really write that? (laughs) But today we're going to look at this. What does it mean that in Christ there is a source of life? Pastor Edmund, lead us with prayer as we... Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for being our source of life. As we spend some time in your word, Lord, we pray that you reveal yourself to us. And Lord, we want to continue to hold on to your hands. We thank you for all the things you've been doing for us, and we thank you for this wonderful gift of eternal life that you give to all those who believe. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, even as you prayed, I thought of this. We're opening a subject that we're going to study deeper in the next few lessons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a lesson coming up. We're going to talk strictly Trinity business. Yeah. We're going to get deep into understanding the Trinity. But today we're just giving this glimpse, because if Christ is the source of life. Mm -hmm. And as he introduces himself as I am, Mm -hmm. he's laying claim to being the great I am. That's right. right, To being the one who revealed himself to Moses as I am Mm -hmm. who I am. Yeah, 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 that's right. And so when you think of this, in that burning bush Mm -hmm. was Christ. Mm -hmm. So as much as say, well, God revealed his name to Moses, well, Christ in the burning bush, revealed himself to Moses as I am who I am. And this lesson would further validate that claim of divinity of Mm -hmm. Christ. Yes, yes, yes. And one thing that I like is that, you know, he mentions that Jesus is the bread of life. Mm -hmm. And and so as I was reflecting on that, um, it was a moment for me to realize, to to, to ask myself, am I really, you know, um, enjoying Jesus as the bread of life? Am I turning to him daily for spiritual nourishment. And um, so, you know, he, to the fruit, to the spiritual nourishment that he freely offers. And so, or am I looking elsewhere? Mm-hmm. So, you know, let's, let's challenge ourselves to recognize that uh, just as we need food and water to survive mm-hmm. physically, uh, we need Jesus for our, our, sp- our survival, for our spiritual growth. Um, on the Sunday part, it says in him was life. So first we, um, when we talk about Jesus having life, in himself, we recognize that he is the source of all life. Um, the same way that a tree cannot exist without its roots, um, life in all creation, in all creation, find its roots in, find its origin in Jesus. Whether it is a small bacterium, an animal, ant, whatever it is, all life um, find its origin in Jesus. How is that statement different than, say, in Edwin there is life, in mm-hmm. Alex there is life? We're alive. Yeah. There's life in you. That's right. There's a breath of life, spirit of life in you. And so how is this statement of Jesus, statement of John about Jesus, that in him was life, Mm -hmm. different than to say in Edwin there is life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So it's not just talking about biological life here, but it's actually something that's deeper. Mm -hmm. Something that uh, it's talking about spiritual life that only Jesus can offer in his, um, can offer to the world. And so this refers to, um, divine to eternal life that mm-hmm. only the Son of God can give. And notice that verse 4 says, that life that is in him mm-hmm. is the light of man. Yeah. You know, my life, yeah. I wish it would be light of man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it could be if Christ is in me and my life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But here it, 
it highlights this point that the life that is in Jesus is something that impacts every life. Yes. You yes. see. Now, I want to look at a few verses on this lesson. Verse, um, let's, let's go to John 3.16, for example. And I read a deeper context from verse 15. Mm -hmm. Whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Mm -hmm. So the life we're talking that in him was life. Yeah. We're talking about eternal life. Eternal life, that's right. And then verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life, mm -hmm. eternal life, everlasting life. Yeah. So the life that is offered in Jesus is that eternal life, yeah. everlasting life. Right. So the life in you, life in me is my personal life. Mm -hmm. Is it eternal? No, no, no. It could be. Yeah. yeah. And I'm emphasizing this because we believe in something that theologians call conditional Immortality. immortality. Yeah. Because my immortality, I don't have one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's in God. God alone is immortal. And if I am to seek that eternal life, everlasting life, yeah. I have to be in God. He has to give it to me as a gift That's in right. Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without that, that whole deception that your soul is immortal is just that. Mm -hmm. Deception. Mm -hmm. It's a lie. It's not true. There is no immortal soul. So that's right. Yeah. And so Christ alone has this eternal, mm -hmm. everlasting life. And and I'm gonna jump to another passage. If you go to John chapter six, and we've been through this where Jesus talks about you mentioned bread of life and, and so on. But look at the reflection there in verse 40. This is the will of the one who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life. Yeah. And I will raise him up at the last day. So it tells me that you could have it even now. Yes. Before dying, mm -hmm. before resurrection, you could have everlasting life now. Now, that's right. And that's a wonderful news. Those who buried their loved ones, recognizing they're not dead, they're asleep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the, the death that is real death, the second death, yeah. will never touch them. That's right. They have everlasting life, which will come in full force mm -hmm. upon the resurrection. Yeah, 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 that's right. And there's a text in, in John chapter 5, verse 31, that says, For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom He will. And so um, this highlights... Um, that, you know, Jesus is divine and, and he has life himself. Mm -hmm. So he's not dependent upon anyone else mm -hmm. um, for eternal life. He's the source of life, both physical and spiritual mm -hmm. life. Now, this is important because there, there's a lot of um, theological perspective that emphasize the idea that Jesus' life is derived from the Father, uh, meaning that the Father is eternal, is the eternal source of the Son's, of, of, of the son's being. So mm -hmm. a lot of theological perspective um, emphasize that, but the Bible makes it clear that Jesus is not dependent on anyone else for life. He himself is the source of life mm -hmm. and he's able to give life to others as mm -hmm. well. You know, as we dwell on these chapters a bit more, I go back to chapter 6. Notice the statement of Jesus in verse 53. It says, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Mm. He's speaking to people who are alive mm. biologically, zoologically. There's yeah. zoe in yeah. them life. Mm -hmm. But he says, no, you don't have life in you mm -hmm. unless you partake me. Yes, right. Because in me, there is that life that I offer. Mm -hmm. And so we have to, I, I hope we communicate this well, that the life that we're living now is only temporary life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The real life, which is eternal life, is possible only in Christ, yeah. in God. Yeah. Amen. And that's what Christ is offering here. You know, we're still in chapter 6, and um, when Jesus' disciples got all upset that he's talking that way, you have to eat my yeah. flesh, drink my blood, and left, mm -hmm. Jesus turns to the rest, says, do you also want to leave? And notice how Peter responds. Lord, to whom shall we go? Verse yeah. 60. Mm -hmm. You have the words of eternal, eternal life. life. And so, again, those of you who may be marking your Bibles, literally circle that word life because you would see that this is one of the themes that runs 
through mm -hmm. the gospel of John, this idea of life. Yeah. From beginning from chapter one to the end, the idea that's of right. life, life, because that's what we want. Mm -hmm. We want to have that life. Yeah. You know, earlier in chapter, uh, same chapter six, verse 63, Jesus says, it is the spirit who gives life. life yeah. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. life. Mm -hmm. And so I'm connecting this that you would understand that life is of a spiritual nature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As mm -hmm. much as we appreciate our biological life yeah. and we eat nutritious food yeah. to stay alive, mm -hmm. there's something greater to life than just biology. And Jesus mm -hmm. pointing out, you know, other times he says, not by bread shall man live alone, yeah, that's right. but by my word. So idea is that life is more a spiritual in nature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's right. You see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with this, my last comment before you take uh, over to another passage, doctors who are supposed to fix us mm. and sustain the life, mm -hmm. quite often they admit that mm -hmm. there's a mystery to life because physiologically, biologically, they could fix things, yeah. but life is still that elusive mystery because the that's true, true life is spiritual in nature. In nature, that's right. That's right. Wonderful. Um, and so you know, there's a quote that uh, that was in the um, well, it wasn't in the lesson, but it was in the extra you know Ellen White commentaries, and it says that Christ became one of humanity, one with humanity, that humanity might become one in spirit and life with Him. And the quote says, by virtue of this union, in obedience to the word of God, his life becomes theirs. Mm -hmm. And so as I thought about this, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, for those that are that are struggling um, with, with addiction, Christ's life offers them the opportunity to be united with them in a way that grants them uh, the strength to overcome the, 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 the power of any addiction. I'm glad you're taking us in that direction. Gospel of John 10.10, 10, beautiful mm -hmm. verse. It says... Jesus says, I came to give you life that yeah. you may have more abundantly. Yeah. But it's the context in which he says, he says, the thief, speaking of Satan, the mm -hmm. devil, mm -hmm. does not come except to steal, to kill, yeah. and to destroy. Yeah. And that's what the devil does. He, he lies. His mm -hmm. ammunition is lie. Later yeah. on in the chapter, he would say, well, you're liars, yeah. <laughs> and your father is a liar. Yeah. And, and so why it's important? Because... People today want to be alive. Mm -hmm. Young people who may be tired and bored, they want to be alive. Yeah. And what's offered are quick fix, yeah. substitutes, be the drugs, be the whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But that's a lie mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because it steals your identity, who you are. Yeah. It steals the true life that is in Christ. Mm -hmm. And it leads to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it kills and ultimately it destroys. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus gives life. He says, I have come that they may have life, life. and that they may have it more abundantly. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm dwelling on this because there is no shortcut to life everlasting. Mm -hmm. There's no bypass around Jesus to life everlasting. Yeah. There's no pill invented, yeah. Yeah. no right. protocol of any kind that will give you life everlasting. In Christ mm -hmm. alone, mm -hmm. there is life. Yeah. And anything else that is offered as a substitute is a lie that will kill you eventually and will destroy you yeah. forever. That's true. That's true. And, and that makes me think of the quote from uh, Blaise Pascal, the French philosopher, mm -hmm. that says that in the human heart, uh, um, there is a God-shaped vacuum that only God, the Creator, is able to That's fill. Right. That's right. And so sometimes we try to fill it with all kinds of things, but it actually leads us more and more to destruction. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus can give us, you know, what would, what will truly fill our mm -hmm. soul, will give us true fulfillment and That's joy. That's right. And um, just my personal testimony. I grew up in an Adventist home. My father was a minister. Mm -hmm. I've gone through my discovery of faith in my mm -hmm. young age. Mm -hmm. And after serving military, I was disappointed with my Seventh-day Adventist church, with my home church mm -hmm. in my hometown. We had an old pastor mm -hmm. who did not really care to explain things to young people. Mm -hmm. And I remember coming to him with a question. I would never forget it. It was Hebrews 4.12. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? 
that the Word of God comes and divides the soul and spirit. I was always curious about that difference between mm -hmm. soul and spirit. And his response was, well, you don't have to understand, just believe. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't <laughs> sit well with a young person. Yeah. And so I checked out different non-denominational, charismatic, Pentecostal churches because they're more alive. Mm -hmm. They're more vibrant music. They had more youth. Things mm -hmm. were happening. Mm -hmm. And then that time, early 90s, American missionaries were coming. Okay. And so churches were mushrooming and all kind of sects and groups and movements were just, just flourishing. Mm -hmm. And I've attended um, Olympic Stadium in Kiev. There was a particular evangelist. He was not Sunday Adventist, mm -hmm. John Guest. Mm -hmm. probably one of the Baptist preachers from U.S., okay. and he came with a singer, Leon Patillo. Mm -hmm. Later, I discovered more of that singer and some of his beautiful music. My favorite is 1500 Miles, Golden City, Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. um, and he was preaching, and I sat and listened, and it dawned on me, it's not a cool church that I need. Mm. It's not yeah. a vibrant church with cool music and big youth group. Mm -hmm. He preached a simple message that Jesus came to give us life and right. give it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. But then when he went to John 15, mm -hmm. that Christ came that he may give us joy, mm -hmm. that our joy may be full. Yeah. It clicked finally mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that the only one I really need is Jesus. That's right. That's he right. is my life. He is my joy. And I went back to my church, to my pastor, said, I want to be baptized. And he kind of looked at me, what gives? You're just not happy with mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. and, and now you want to be baptized. And yeah. I said to him, Pastor, I understand. Mm -hmm. It's all about Jesus. Yeah. And when you have Christ in you, mm -hmm. that's all you need. That's all you need, yeah. So when people tell me, Pastor, I want to join your church. I would say, well, do you want to join Jesus first? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, yeah. Honestly, I didn't want people to come and join the church if the church for them is community or, or a club yeah. of people who may hate this or yeah, love yeah, that. Yeah. I want you to know Jesus. Know life, yeah. Because when you have Christ, mm -hmm. welcome in the church, because church becomes a team to help others to find Jesus. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what's really needed. In John chapter 6, from verse 61 to verse 68, we encounter a pivotal moment in Jesus' ministry where, you know, yes, his disciple, if, if they too will turn away from him and, and, and his challenging teaching on the bread of life, and, you know, as many of his followers struggle uh, with the implication of his word, Peter responds with a powerful declaration, Lord, to whom shall we go? He says, you have the words mm -hmm. of eternal life. Mm -hmm. And in the statement, Peter not only expressed um, his loyalty, but also recognizes the profound truth that Jesus alone is the source of life, not just an, you know, earthly existence, but eternal, eternal life. And uh, Jesus' words in, in John chapter 6 emphasize that eternal life is not just an abstract concept or a future hope, but it's something that transforms our lives right now. It's interesting you're pointing this because Jesus chapter before he tells the Pharisees and scribes and all of them that you search the scriptures for you hope to have in them yeah. the life but these scriptures testify of me right. and now Peter Ad says it's in you that we have the words mm -hmm. and so to put this in, in context Peter is saying the words in Torah mm -hmm. is not enough it's in you that we have words that give us life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is radical because for Jews, the words of Torah yeah. gave life. And I brought it back. But Jesus revealed that it's not only about him, but he has the added value, so to say. Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. it's in him yeah. that the words of Torah, it's in Jesus that all the teachings and revelations of God from the previous generations yeah. now they're coming into fulfillment. fulfillment that's right and it is through christ that we have life mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and that's the significance of this so as we're looking at monday's lesson we're going over these passages again yeah. digging deeper to show how it is that in christ the word becomes so alive that it activates life in, in us. us yeah 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 and this indicates that his teachings um, they're not mere human instructions, but mm -hmm. they're infused with divine power. 
Um, then they're capable to transform lives and leading us to eternal salvation. And, you know, his words reveal the, the will of God and guide the people to a relationship with him. And, and Peter declares in verse 68, it says, um, Lord, to whom shall we go? Again, it says, you have the words of eternal mm -hmm. life. And so he acknowledges that Jesus, um, his words are unique and, and has the ability to offer hope, truth, and the promise of eternal life. And so it really underscores that Jesus mm -hmm. is the true source of salvation. You said an important word, mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. And as we teach this, we know that teachers watch before they teach their lesson yeah. on Sabbath. And we hope that we make so much sense that those who watch and listen will do even better job facilitating discussion on mm -hmm. Sabbath in mm -hmm. their classes. Because it's the motivational factor that is important here. Because mm -hmm. you could read the book and decide to act on it. Yeah. But if you have someone who walks with you, whose relationship now inspires and motivates you to do so, mm -hmm. then you have that extra empowerment in your life. Yeah. You see, there are a lot of people who know intellectually the right things to do, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they're missing the motivation. And mm -hmm. quite often it's a relationship mm -hmm. that would motivate someone to actually do it. Do it, that's right. And so when we talk about Christ, being that source of motivation, we talk about relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a verse that I want to draw our attention to is Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 31. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus mm -hmm. is the Christ, yeah. the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. Mm -hmm. And it's this, not just knowing the words, but believing Believing in Christ, having relationship with Him in His name, yeah. that will give us life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm hoping that again our audience understands. It's from intellectual ascent to relational connection with Christ yeah. that activates That's right. our That's right. faith to live that life even now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one thing that stood out to me is that eternal life is not just a, a promise of the future. Mm -hmm. But it's a reality that shapes how we begins live now. today. It begins, right. it begins now. And so when we accept Jesus' invitation, uh, we begin to experience life as it was meant to be. Abundant, mm -hmm. full of meaning, and, and eternal in, in school. Mm -hmm. um, another passage that John 8, 31, Jesus said to Jews who believed, so notice, they, they know the word, now they know Jesus and they believe in him. He takes them to a next step. He says, if you abide in my word, mm -hmm. you're my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And so it's this abiding in Christ, abiding in his word, abiding in his spirit, mm -hmm. and uh, literally living life in his presence. That's all that matters. Yeah, that's right. In chapter 1, verse 12, it says, But as many as received them, to them he gave the right to become children of God. It's a wonderful news here. It says, To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And so this, this presents your profound view of salvation, outlining both um, human responsibility and divine action in becoming a Christian. And so these two verses really emphasizes the, the, the role of faith in receiving Jesus and uh, the transformative power that comes from him. You know, let's unpack this verse a bit more. Today, in mental health care, in soul care, in, in this new branch of science that emerged literally in the last 60 or so years, mm -hmm. there's a lot of focus on the past on the DNA, on our origins, mm -hmm. on a family of origins. Yeah. And many people say, well, I am this way because of who my parents were, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or because what I've inherited, or yeah. because of the trauma that happened to me in my developmental years. Mm -hmm. And quite often people excuse their life by that. 
Mm. Some may get upset at the parents that left them with such a defective inheritance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some may blame their parents for the upbringing or mm -hmm. trauma, whatever happened there. Mm -hmm. And for some, it becomes an excuse to say, hey, my parents were alcoholics, so what do you expect yeah. from me? Mm -hmm. Or um, I came from a culture where men have multiple wives, so what do you expect from me? Mm -hmm. But the Bible says, look, God came to be in a human flesh yeah. to give us now opportunity to also be born anew, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to be born again. Yeah. So don't ever use that excuse because in Christ, in God, you have an opportunity to be born again. Mm -hmm. So as much as this flesh still carries DNA of my mom and dad, yeah. I have a new opportunity to have that renewal of the spirit mm -hmm. that it's new Alex, That's right. new Advent, yeah. would live in this human flesh mm -hmm. and change it from inside out. Yeah. Because Jesus came and dwelt in human flesh mm -hmm. that was weakened by millennia of, of human nature. Yeah. And yet his connection with God invites us to walk in that newness of That's life. Right. Yeah. In Christ, we are new creatures. That's right. I am new creation in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so the message to anyone who struggled with sin, I'm not softening the words here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You in Christ are new creature. Do not use that crutch of blaming your hereditary That's tendencies right. for yeah. how you live now. Mm -hmm. Because in Christ, you've got all you need to, make, to yeah. live as a child of God, yeah. heir of heaven. That's right. That's right. And our, our new identity as children of God is not something that, uh, that we earn or achieve on our own. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's literally a gift of God. And, and this spiritual birth represents a transformation that happens inside of us. Um, and it's a recreation of the heart through the work of the Holy Spirit. And as you mentioned, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the lesson brings another verse, Romans 8, 16. That's one of my favorite verses. You know, everyone has a string of verses that, that speak love, to them, yeah. right? Yeah. And in that chapter, I have two favorite verses. Verse mm -hmm. 28, that all things work for good for those who love God and yeah. call according to His purpose. And this verse, 16. Mm -hmm. And as you read it, you would see why. Yeah. Because sometimes we're limited to who we talk to. Mm. People say, well, I have my boundaries. I don't want to talk about it. And say, okay, mm -hmm. can't talk to you about this. But notice mm -hmm. what this verse says. Verse 16 says in Romans chapter 8, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So one prayer that I have to God, speak to so-and-so, speak to so-and-so, because mm -hmm. God's spirit could talk to an individual spirit, reminding them mm -hmm. they're his children. Yes. You see? Yeah. And that's a beautiful picture where we are short of being able to communicate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit could still knock through to that person and remind them, you are a child of God. What they do with it, it's their choice. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. But they still hear in their spirit a reminder by God's spirit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that they're God's children. Yeah, 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 that's right. You know, as we're talking about this born again experience, notice that it's the spirit that gives that new birth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And because we're triune as human beings, there's a flesh, there's emotions, the soul, the psyche, the heart, yeah. and then there's a spirit. The challenge that we all face is by faith. Mm -hmm. Live by the Spirit. Yeah. Don't listen to your flesh. I mean, it's important to know what the flesh wants, but override it by your spirit mm -hmm. in obedience to Christ. That's right, that's right. Even your heart, you have to come to accept that your heart is deceitful mm -hmm. and wicked, and your heart will trip you up. Yeah. Cannot even rely on your emotional state. You need to know your emotions, mm -hmm. but submit everything to the Spirit because yeah. it's only by the Spirit that we're set free. Mm -hmm. In God is Spirit, yeah. and where the Spirit is, there is liberty. And it's that truth that we're talking about that sets us free. When you have that liberty, when you have a freedom mm -hmm. from your past, yeah. freedom from your inheritance, freedom even from your emotional hang ups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you're truly free to live a new life. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you better believe it. Yeah, that's right, that's right. 
And so this confirms that the Holy Spirit plays a crucial role in both convicting us, convicting, convicting us um, of sin and assuring uh, us of our new identity in God as God's children. And so Ellen White states that faith, biblical faith, based on the work of the Holy Spirit is our hearts, um, is in our hearts, is the foundation of our faith. Faith, the greatest blessing, the eye that sees, the ear that hears. And so faith is, you know, enabled by God and the Holy Spirit is the one who illuminates our hearts so that we can receive the message of salvation. And so faith is not just merely an in intellectual um, knowledge, but it's a deep conviction um, of the truth mm -hmm. that leads to transformation. And so it starts as a gift and grows as we uh, continue to respond to the word of God. And so it's the eyes and ears that allow us to perceive the reality of God's grace. And so in this way, we grow uh, mm -hmm. deeper in our understanding of who Jesus is and what he has um, done for Amen. all of us. Right? Yeah. So throughout, um, throughout the scriptures, we find instances of rejection, misunderstanding, and disbelief toward the very source of life, toward God mm -hmm. himself. And so one of the saddest, um, most profound moment is when Jesus, the light of the world, is rejected by his own creation. And it says in John chapter 1, verse, uh, verse 5, And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And, uh, and, and as we reflect on the story of the spies in Numbers 13 and the rejection of Jesus in chapter 1, I, I was reminded of how easily um, humanity can, can, can doubt or misunderstand God's promises. Mm -hmm. um, and so John 1 verse 5 and verse 10, verse 10 says, um, He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. And in verse 11, he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. And so, um, you know, that this really brought me to think, how can I personally, and I think this is a question that we, we should all think about, how can we personally avoid rejecting the source of life and, and, and instead trust in his promises, um, as, you know, we see in the examples of the spies in, in Canaan? You know, before you go to the spies, I'm looking at that verse, and in my Bible, I, I literally cross the word comprehend. I see where the translator is coming from, because verse 10 says that when Christ was in the world, the world mm -hmm. made through him, and the world did not know him. So there's that concern that the world did not understand, the world did not mm -hmm. know, the world rejected, right? Uh, verse 11, he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. Mm -hmm. And so you could see how translators say, well, darkness did not comprehend mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. concept of misunderstanding yeah. and therefore rejection. Mm -hmm. But the original word in Greek is very interesting. It's katelabe, mm -hmm. which means more to overcome, to swallow, to seize, to okay, grab. Okay, okay. And so it gives you a bigger picture. It's not that the darkness just did not want to understand the light. No, mm -hmm, no, no. Mm -hmm. Darkness wanted to envelop and, and seize and capture the light, yeah. but it cannot do that mm -hmm. because light pushes and expels the darkness. Light shines through. Mm -hmm. Light casts away darkness, yeah. you see. Mm -hmm. And so verse 5 to me speaks more because darkness will never get it mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it would stop being darkness. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. And, and it's the concept that the light pushes the darkness away. And so people, just picture this physically. Mm -hmm. You're standing in the darkness and the light shines. A car is driving by with the high beams. Yeah. What happens? The darkness flee and now you're exposed in the light. Mm -hmm. If you are to stay hidden, what would you do? You run off to where the darkness is. Mm -hmm. You see my point? Yeah. You run off from that bright spot where the light shines. shines that's right. So for people who want to remain in the darkness, they have to run with the darkness. Mm -hmm. They literally have to run away from the light. From the light yeah. And this may sound a bit radical, but notice when Christ comes, there's a two groups of people. Those who run into the light and mm -hmm. say, we waited for you. Mm -hmm. And there are those who run away and say, Let's hide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, let's get in a cave somewhere. They're afraid. That 
light mm -hmm. is destructive for them because they want to cling to darkness. Yeah. And so rejecting the source of life, rejecting this freeing truth as it is in Jesus, mm -hmm. is choosing evil, is choosing darkness, is choosing to stay and hide from light in a darkness. So the, the, the rejection of God's word and, and truth and his light is, all, is a constant theme that we see in the Gospel of John. And it's not just the ancient Israelites that did it, but it's, it's all people. We all have the, this you know, um, possibility of rejecti re rejecting the source of light. And Paul says in Hebrews um, 10 verse 35, he says, Do not cast away your confidence. And so that's a reminder that we need to stand firm in faith. And, and standing in firm in faith is essential and uh, doubts should not cause us to waver. You mentioned doubts. It's interesting. In medicine, there's a term, photophobia, fear of light. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's part of the agnostic tool, shining light in a person. And person who's got problems with the brain or central nervous system, they may scream in pain by simply being exposed to light. Mm. There's a whole list of diagnoses yeah. as to why people are afraid of light. And the point is, we're created to be exposed to light, to love light. Yeah. When something is off, when something is wrong, all of a sudden we can't tolerate mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. And the same thing in spiritual life. Mm -hmm. When something is off, not comfortable in the light. Mm -hmm. But ideally, when you're walking with Christ, when you're walking with God, there should be no fear of light at all. Yeah. And as you mentioned, doubt... The lesson is a quotation that contemporary humanistic way of thinking begins with doubt. Mm. And, and that's very interesting because we are doubting ourselves all the time mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. human beings. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a passage that to me is one of those foundational passages to understand humanism is well-known René Descartes phrase, cogito ergo sum, mm -hmm. I think... Therefore, Therefore, I am. I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, while it's great philosophical phrase, mm -hmm. it has devastating outcomes. Yeah. Because today's humanism bases basically everything on this. Mm -hmm. You are what you think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you realize how dangerous right. that is? Very dangerous, yeah. Someone is confused, gender dysphoria. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you are who you think, think you are, yeah. That's messed up. Yeah. I taught my kids since they're little boys. Boys, you're not what you think. Yeah, 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so this doubting based on your human understanding, mm -hmm. not reflecting to God's revelations, is very dangerous mm -hmm. because it could lead us humanity to some dark corners. Yeah. Okay. That's right. It's only when we're exposed by God's light that we only when we embrace who we truly are as God intended and created us to be mm -hmm. that that gives us the life that we need mm -hmm. amen as I reflected on the uh, Wednesday part of the lesson um, the question that came to mind is how can I avoid making the same mistakes as the spies uh, who rejected God's promise due to fear and and, and doubt well I want to ask you mm -hmm. the question how do you think we can avoid making those same mistakes um, as them. You know, you're referring to the spies, and for those who may not know the story, when uh, Israelites coming out of Egypt approached the Promised Land, it was literally a year and a half after they left Egypt. Yeah. And some people say, well, what took them so long? Well, God stopped them and gave them tabernacle, and they spent mm -hmm. a whole year there at Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. um, developing, building, constructing, learning the the sacrificial system so yeah. god gave them a whole year at the mount sinai to mm -hmm. figure out the plan of salvation through tabernacle that's yeah. that's another story but after that they approached the land mm -hmm. and they sent the spies yeah. to check it out mm -hmm. and so majority came back with a report mm -hmm. we can't do it yeah <laughs> but there was a minority too mm -hmm. who said with god we can mm -hmm. and uh, we may have our own life situations, you know, that expression, cup half full versus cup mm -hmm. half empty. Yeah. Positive and negative, optimist and pessimist yeah. in life. And so what is that 
difference, really. Mm -hmm. um, a comment was made by our producer mm -hmm. that even in secular psychology, they teach that not every thought that comes to our head is our thought. Mm -hmm. There's a concept of inception yeah. that we have to filter and that cognitive discipline needs to process our thinking uh, mechanism to see which thoughts are right and which are not. Oh, no, yeah. And so with your question, I'm kind of giving you runabout, big, big way answer. Mm -hmm. But the concept is, again, if we filter every decision through obedience to God, mm -hmm. trust and obey, for there is yes. no other, other way. way. Yeah. You see, any situation we find ourselves in, we should ask, what would Jesus do? What mm -hmm. is God's will for me in this situation? Yeah. Instead of me being in charge, charge mm -hmm. and then doubting, did I make a right decision? Yeah, 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 yeah. Putting it to God, yeah. saying, God, order my footsteps, guide me. Mm -hmm. If this is the wrong way, shut the door down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. literally, be still and know I am God. What about that passage? Mm -hmm. You know, That's right. where instead of yeah. rushing, if you do something in doubt, whatever is not of faith is sin. You have to be confident that this is what God wants you to do. To do, exactly. And if you are in the presence of God, if you're walking with God, you cannot be but confident because mm -hmm. you are with God and He's with you. Mm -hmm. And so you just move forward with God. He will direct your path. That's, That's my personal right. conviction. Yes, yes, yes. And for me, you know, I, for me, it's to trust in God's word over human reasoning. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, faith calls us to believe that God is bigger than than all the situations and the challenges that we face. And so when mm -hmm. God speaks, His Word should be the foundation of our decision, no matter what the uh, challenges ahead are. Amen. And, uh, and, yeah. and again, you say some words and just triggers my thinking. Mm -hmm. God is bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, 1 John 3.20 mm -hmm. Even if your heart condemns you, yes. God is bigger than your heart. That's God right. is greater than your heart. Mm -hmm. And the next Thursday, we're going to talk about this whole condemnation business, right? Mm -hmm. And so even if our heart is in doubt, mm -hmm. remember God is bigger than your heart. Yes. For Thursday's um, part on condemnation, we turn to a powerful reminder in Scripture about the life-altering choice between uh, believing in Jesus and rejecting his truth and we see that the consequences are crucial uh, as we go in John chapter 3 we all know the verse for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life but when we keep going now in verse 18 he says he who believes in him is not condemned he who believes in him is not condemned but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And it says here in verse 19, And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. And so uh, this theme here, as mm -hmm. I reflected on it, um, invites us to examine not only that, you know, the act um, of belief, um, well, it invites us to examine that the act of belief, but also the spiritual battle that takes place when we are confronted with the light of truth. And so throughout the scriptures, we uh, are warned about the dangers of rejecting the light that Christ offers, just as uh, Eve was led astray by doubt in the garden, so too do many fall in, um, into condemnation by questioning God's word. Um, but yet Christ provides us the example of how to combat temptations and deceptions of the enemy with the truth of God's word. And so that section here um, says that those who accept Jesus, they're not condemned. However, those who reject him, they stand condemned already. And so this is not a passive outcome it's a choice and so the rejection of christ is not uh, merely intellectual or, theor uh, or theoretical it's also a rejection of the light a turning away from truth into darkness you know um you spoke on this passage and and the word that is really um key word there is this condemnation mm 
yeah. condemned. Verse 17, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So Christ does not come to condemn, mm -hmm. but to save. And so further on, this condemnation is explained. Notice that it's past tense. Who believes in him is already mm -hmm. not condemned, but That's who right. doesn't believe is already past already, tense yeah. Yeah. condemned. So it's not will be condemned in the future, mm -hmm. but is already condemned. So people who refuse to believe, they have already been sentenced to judgment. Mm -hmm. And this concept of condemnation, it's literally a legal uh, term. It's sentencing someone to punishment, yeah. sending someone to punishment. It's being punished. Yeah. To, con to be condemned is to be punished almost. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the concept here is this, that without Christ, people are already as good as dead. Yeah. Okay. And that's that's very deep thought, because many people fear future judgment. And what's gospel are saying? No, it happens here and now. Yeah. This condemnation business. Mm -hmm. And what is important in the scriptures is the concept of condemnation within ourselves. And where I'm going with this. Apostle Paul especially, he develops this, that when you fear the future, you're actually reaping the penalties within yourself. Mm. Uh, if you eat wrong, yeah. you're condemning yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you disobey authorities, you are already condemned. So it's this concept of present time judgment. Mm -hmm. One passage that is really scary is Romans chapter 1, verse 27. And yes, it's written in context of sexual sins, but it speaks of doing shameful things and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. Mm -hmm. So if you really understand what it says there, it says those who commit shameful things, they already receiving penalty within themselves. Mm. The consequences of sinful, shameful doings mm. already playing out within the human body. Mm -hmm. Wow. Eating wrong, yeah. doing wrong things, you already suffering the consequences here and now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so as we're talking about this light of the world, Jesus, life, the opposite is if you're not in Jesus, if you're not in the light, if you are clinging to evil and doing what's wrong, you are suffering mm -hmm. the punishment even now. That's what condemnation is. Yeah. And it's not that God in the future will smite you down. No, you already suffering the penalties of wrong choices here and now. Bottom line. That's right. That's right. That's right. And so, you know, the, the ultimate question then is, is not... Uh, whether we are offered light, but it's whether mm -hmm. we choose to step into the light. Uh, Amen. In John uh, chapter 12, verse 47, um, it reminds us that, you know, Jesus says, If anyone hears my word and does not believe, I do not judge him, for I did not come to, the, I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. So ultimately, Thursday's focus on condemnation challenged us to examine whether we are accepting, embracing the light of Christ or choosing the darkness of doubt mm -hmm. and rejection. Mm -hmm. And so our response determines not just our uh, present peace, but also our eternal destiny. Right. And as I'm thinking of this, I think of another passage by Apostle Paul. It's Ephesians chapter 5. And it's an interesting passage because he's focusing there on this light business. Verse 11 says, have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose it. Yeah. And I know some ministries who are big on this. This becomes their motto. That's what we're doing. We're exposing the works of darkness. Yeah. And they're forgetting to read the next passage. It's shameful to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. So when I see a certain ministry that spends two hours talking about the dirty secrets 
they're doing shameful things. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. That's right. I don't need to hear what Jesuits are up to or Masons <laughs> or whatever. If they are secret societies, let them stay secret. How do you even know what's happening <laughs> by them who do things in secret? You know? yeah. and, and I find this ridiculous because some ministries, so-called ministries, it's a vulture ministry. But there's a carnage, there would be vultures, and that's what they do. They just eat that meat. Yeah. And there's problems in every church. There's a problem in every society. Don't feed me that. Because the next says this. This is how you expose things. All things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So the true revival comes not by feeding us garbage. Yeah. Of, of rotten world. We already know that Babylon is fallen. This yeah, world is messed right. up. Don't bring me more illustrations of mm -hmm. that. Give me Jesus. Yeah. The true revival is when the light shines and cast away all the darkness. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe this is a silly example. You know, when you find dirty socks laying out of place on the floor, mm -hmm. you don't come and say, whose is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put it in the laundry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so here is this. The real ministry of light is pushing away darkness, yeah. not sporting that darkness for everybody to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And so as we're looking at this, our message is not that of condemnation. Our message is calling people to Jesus. That's right. That's right. Because with Jesus, they already know in their heart that they're damned. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally. That's true. They need hope. So let's yeah. lead them to Jesus, give them light, not any more of you're going to suffer and you're going to perish. Mm -hmm. They know that already. That's right. They're already they having that penalty yeah. within themselves. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, you know, that makes me, you know, the lesson makes me, made me think of, uh, of a story of my friend who um, he was driving on the highway. He saw someone who was willing to help that person. And he, you know, figured out that the person was going somewhere pretty far. And so he still gave him a ride. And, um, and so, of course, that was he sacrificed his time. He sacrificed mm -hmm. his gas. And as the guy is leaving the car, he grabs the steps to Christ, put it in a little gift package that you already had, and he just handed Good. it to him. But he took it, took the book, realized that it was about Christ, um, that it was a religious book, put it in the back, and he said, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. For him, he was puzzled because it's like, after all I've done for you, mm -hmm. I'm in the car with you, and I'm giving you this gift bag. All mm -hmm. the least you can do is... Take it. Take it, yeah. Um, but he rejected it. And he didn't have to pay anything. He didn't have to do anything. Just accept it. And, you know, and, you know, that made me think of, you know, Jesus coming to give us everlasting life, eternal life, and um, people just rejecting it and choosing to remain in darkness rather than embracing light, embracing life. And as you're sharing this, I'm thinking of there's medical cases where people would rather choose to stay in their pain. Yeah than seek healing mm -hmm. and that's something the doctors struggle with yeah. when they could offer patient a relief and the patient chooses to stay and suffer mm -hmm. rather than get well yeah. and that's why when jesus was on earth notice i mean he interacted with many mm -hmm. but those who he healed he usually asked the question what do you want me to do for you yeah do you really want to be healed, to be healed. that's right yeah. And so as we're discussing this, the question for our audience, for everyone, the light is there. That's right. Do you want to be in the light? Yes. Come out from whatever crevices and corners you're hiding in. Come into the light. Mm -hmm. Yes, that light may cause some exposure that may be painful initially. Mm -hmm. But in the long run, it gives life and That's gives right. it abundantly. It gives joy. It mm -hmm. changes your day-to-day -day experience forever. Yeah. That's true. And I want to, you know, mention this quote here from Ellen White on the Friday section, the last paragraph. It says that Christ was treated as we deserve, that we might be treated as he deserves. He was condemned for our sins in which he had no share, that we might be justified by his righteousness in which we had no share. He suffered the death which was ours, that we might receive the life which was his. Mm -hmm. With his stripes, we mm -hmm. are healed. And so, you know, the gift is for all of us. And the question is, are we going to embrace it or are we going to accept it? That's right. It?